today we're going to talk about picking your background fabric for your quilt. Um, there's a little bit of noise going on in the background. My neighbors are getting their house re-roofed, so I don't really think they'll respond well if I tell them to be quiet. <laughs> uh, for my quilt, I'm going to be using this Jelly Roll of Reverie by Melody Miller for Ruby Star Society. It's really got a lot of pretty colors, and I'm going to attempt to be a little more daring with my background fabric for this quilt, and I haven't actually picked it yet. But don't worry, um, I did order a safe option. <laughs> so here's my safe option. Here's my somewhat safe option, and here it would be my more daring option, because I don't normally choose darker colors for my background fabric. So this is speckled, this is spark, and this is, I don't remember. I think it's Kona bone. Um, all right, so I have not opened this jelly roll yet, so I'm going to do it for you. Uh, it always feels a little bit momentous to open a jelly roll. Um, I want to pick something that coordinates well with my fabrics, of course. Look at that. It's unrolled. Uh, but I also, you know, a jelly roll, or for this for this pattern, you need 36 jelly roll strips. So I want something that will contrast well with my backing fabric. So I, if I have a bunch of uh, jelly roll strips that use like predominantly this color or predominantly this color, they'll blend into the background too much. So I want to make sure I have 36 strips that will stand out pretty well from the background fabric and usually like a white or a light gray is a pretty safe background fabric choice unless you're using a collection that's got a lot of white in it which is not usually the case but sometimes it is so i haven't actually looked at this collection in detail yet so you are along for the ride with me all right so i know there are so i couldn't find this this is what I originally had planned to order for the background. I couldn't find it. I don't think it's available quite yet. So um, it's the color is succulent, I think. And so I ordered this speckled color. It's very similar to this. It looks on my camera. It looks the same in person. They look slightly different. So if I were going to use that as my background fabric, I definitely would not use this print. I'm going to set it aside because I. I want to try to use the more daring print. Um, so I'm just gonna look at all of these and think like, how do they look with that color? Um, definitely, I like the red with the pink better. There are some duplicates in this collection. I'm gonna set the duplicates aside now, probably use several of them, but then I can decide which ones I wanna use. I think this is my favorite print in the collection. It's really pretty. I'll move this up a little bit so you can see better. So I'm just sorting through these and thinking, how would this look? I don't know guys, I'm kind of liking the pink. Hmm. Um, although I don't know if I like the pink with that. I probably would set that one aside maybe. If I were going to use the white as a background fabric, it's very loud next door. Sorry. Um, this one would probably be okay to use, but I probably would not use this because or this because they would blend in quite a bit with the background. It would, I don't know, it may be okay. But with the pink or the succulent, they both work really well. Oh, I really like the succulent color with this yellow. Getting a new roof is loud. All right, so now I need to think about, these have more of this succulent color in them. So I think these are okay. I think that's all right. I probably wouldn't use, cause there are two prints of that collection. Probably wouldn't use both of them just because if I were gonna use this as my background, just because of they are a little bit similar and I maybe wouldn't use that one, which is too bad because I really like that print. Don't know about that. I think this one is all right. It's got quite a bit of a difference. This 
is pretty. Um, definitely would want to use these. There are a lot of contrast with all of these background options. So I, I, I'm trying to get, I wanted my quilt um, to get a lot, as much scale, value, and color. That's what I like to aim for. If you're making a quilt that's like all blue, then obviously you're not gonna get color variation. Um, that's fine. But for this particular project, I want a lot of variation. So scale would be like the size of the print. So this would be a larger scale print. And this would be, you know, a little bit smaller. Um, that's a larger scale. There's a, this would be a smaller scale smaller and then for value you know obviously these dark blues are going to be the darker value and then something like these would be the lighter value so I'm, I want the full range that tends to be my preference in quilts but not always okay so yeah I'm actually thinking I'm going to use this so now I'm going to going to pick so I'm going to move these guys I'll probably actually use this for my scrap quilt background. Okay, so now I've kind of got them all arrayed out um, and I need to take I have these are the duplicates and the ones that I had previously taken out to, to decide if I wanted to use um, so I I'm gonna go through them and decide which ones I want to use and which four I want to set aside okay so this is the one I'm not sure about because I think it may be too similar to the background I like that Definitely want to use that. I am going to use this pink. Definitely not that. I really like the pink and red with this. So I think I'll, I need to take duplicate ones out. I'm going to take that one, um, that one, I need one more. Oh, that one's a duplicate. We'll take that one out. All right, so these are my four extras, and you can set these aside to use for a different project, or you could even use them as your binding strips if you wanted to. Um, I will find a way to use them. So I'll set those aside. I've got my 36 strips right here, ready to go.